Good morning, all attendees to the Daily Lunch and Learn hosted by Decisions. Uh, my name is Josh, and I will be your host for this afternoon, not evening yet. Yep, afternoon. Um, so we're going to get started in a couple minutes here. Um, we have no pre-submitted questions, so uh, feel free to put some in the question box. And yeah, we'll go through them in the order in which they were submitted. So thank you for your patience. Let's give everyone just about a couple more minutes just to join here. Thanks. All right, we will go ahead and just kind of get started here. Again, my name is Josh. I will be the host uh, for this afternoon meeting. Um, welcome to Decisions Lunch and Learn. We are glad you are here, and we are hoping that we can answer some of your questions today. Um, so, if you again, if you have any questions, put it into the questions box, and let's uh, go through them one by one. Since we don't have any questions right now, um, I'll kind of just talk about any kind of topic that's on my heart. So, um, uh, yeah, so I guess one of the more, if we don't have anything, we can talk about uh, case entities. One of the more common, I guess, uh, questions we get asked about builds is, uh, okay, yes, we're using the process folder from training, and we've been using that pretty, you know, going through the motions pretty well, but we kind of want to step away from that more process you know, kind of a one flow mentality and more into a state driven development approach. Um, it's very, very common. So it, it's kind of like a preference on what you can kind of use case entity for. Case entities are more for state driven development. So you can make flows specifically for states, make trigger actions based off of if it enters a certain state and stuff like that. Um, they're very underused and not very um, appreciated. So <laughs> we're going to talk about them today. Um, so I'm going to pull up my local host here. Um, one second, let me just stop sharing really quick. And I'm going to walk you through kind of one example I was asked to build the other day, and we're going to build it together. So um, I'm going to call this a timing, a timeout case entity. So essentially a customer came to me and they were like, we want to build a um, process that essentially casts someone an assignment, but that, is, but that assignment will have an expiration date. Once it hits that expiration date, we want to change the state, but we want to cast another assignment to the same user. Basically this assignment is going to progress the whole time with the user, state is going to be changing and the expiration date is going to be changing. So the method I'm going to be working on here is using a case entity and using a trigger action 
um, of a state. So essentially, we are going to cast an assignment to someone, to a group, whoever, and then kind of after uh, the assignment has hit a timeout session, we're going to move it along and cast another assignment and just kind of keep it moving. So if at any point in time something doesn't make sense, I'll happily uh, kind of go back to the drawing board here and we can talk about it. So I'm going to go ahead and just add one, more, one designer folder here for my data structures. <clears throat> In this data structure, I'm going to go ahead and hit create data types, and I'm going to go to the infamous case entity. I'm going to call this timeout assignment case, and I'm just going to add a couple pieces here. Um, first name, last name. It's actually all I'm going to add. I don't want to make this too robust. You can make this, you know, however big you want to. Uh, essentially, anything that's on the assignment that you would review in this scenario would be in this timeout assignment case structure. But I'm just going to make something simple, first name, last name. And I'm going to get this nice view of a case entity. So you'll see, you'll see I have two states. I have started and completed so far. I can add as many states as I need to. I can remove as many states as I need to. However, you know, you see fit, whatever fits your kind of um, you know, use case. So um, let's get one of these started here. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and create another flow. I'm going to call it submit timeout assignment. Make something super simple. I'm going to come in here and make a form. Create form. Uh, I'm going to do timeout submission and review in here. I'm just going to do create. So I got a question that says, hi, can a comment be added to a closed state? For instance, we want to know who set the process to complete and did the last action. Is that something you would need to do in the preview state, or can it be listed in the complete state as a case view? So um, with cases, uh, essentially the data is in a certain state. Like it doesn't prevent you from adding actions to that or doing actions of the complete state. The data just exists. Um, so the data is just in a certain state and you can make, you can like change it back to open. You can change it back to closed. You can kind of move it all over the place, but in every kind of instance in every circumstance, it is available to be acted upon and available, available to be like used and manipulated. Does that help? I think so. So we have a use case and end users who didn't really understand the importance of comments and logging and audit trail. So they missed a lot of spots where they wanted one. Yeah. And so what they wanted to know was who completed a certain process. So yeah. I can actually add that so that it shows up under complete. Absolutely. Yeah. Whichever state, you know, it happened on, you can do it. Um, again, any, like at any point in time in this case's existence from, from the start of its birth to the, you know, to the end of your server, it can be acted upon and changed and altered. So you can put, you can put comments at any point in time. So let me uh, ask another question. So if I were to put it in the state before, I would be current user. So once it goes to complete, is that still the current user? If it changes states? If it changes state. So from my, my perspective, and we might have to test this uh, to be able to confirm, but as soon as you change the state, the trigger action actually respects who is looking at it again. But either way, if you change the state in the flow, like let's say you run a flow to change the state of the object to the closed point, that flow still oper is still you know operating and still moving. Anything you create after is going to be created in that state. So if you wanted to kind of cast it to another state, but you wanted to keep your flow still going and doing other things, you can. Okay. And that the only thing I would want to do is add a comment. That's oh, perfect. perfect. Thank you for bringing yep. up states because that reminded me I wanted to ask that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Happy coincidence. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put first name. Last name. I'm going to use this. Uh, this form right here in two different areas. I'm going to use it as a review and as a submission. Um, if you don't have experience doing that, it's something that can make your, your project a little bit more nimble. 
the fact that we we usually make we'll, we'll make a submission form and a review form what i'm going to try to do here is make one singular form so that if i make changes to any of them i don't have to make it twice i can make it once um, and i can show you how to do that make it more dynamic um, i do not like the inner margin being 15 it typically changes to five i think it looks a lot cleaner but that's just a preference so do with that as you will i'm going to name this button text something a little bit odd i'm gonna name it primary action once i name it primary action i'm gonna come down here to behavior and view and there's a little checkbox called text from data name once i do that i can kind of name the button what it will be from an input right so right now it's going to be na but it allows me to assign it a data name that way it makes it a new input to my form so it can be very dynamic so i'm going to make it um, primary button name right and then i'm going to make one more that's going to be secondary button name here override text value And then I can come down here, data name for this one is gonna be first name. Text box is gonna be last name. So I'm gonna close this form right here and you'll see I have two things, primary action, secondary action button name. I'm gonna go ahead and change this really quick. Go to my button my view if i just hit that i can do I can name it something else data name again go back so now i can close and i'll see primary action secondary action and the input's going to be primary button name secondary button name so you'll see that so first name i'm just going to ignore last name and ignore primary button name i'm going to say i'm going to say my my local host is very bad i just stress test something so I'm going to say submit and then for the secondary action i'm just going to say close or what makes more sense probably cancel right now if i come here and debug you'll see my form says cancel submit first name last name both ignored so that's great so um next thing i'm going to do um we're going to create our case entity. So I'm going to go here, go to the case entity, my timeout assignment request. I'm just going to do a create object step. Yeah, okay, let's figure out a place for it to live. So I'm going to duplicate my tab really quick. I'm going to go down here to all, add. I'm going to add a folder. And this is just going to hold my process data. So all process data. Save. Now I have a nice folder where I can put all my case entities in. Go back to my other tab extension data i'm just going to build data on that you can see my first name last name folder description i really don't need folder name i like to make something pretty unique um but it will make it unique for you so for this kind of circumstances i'm just going to put process data parent folder id if you just set it constant you can pick your folder so i'm just going to pick all process data and then only the primary action is going to go to that so that's going to be good right there Anything else, I'm gonna come here and edit this form. Click first name. All right, good. Secondary actions not used, that's great. Secondary actions not used, perfect. So that's not gonna create like extra data in my flow. If you look down here in the outcomes, you'll just see the primary action, first name and last name. Sometimes it'll be like not used and it'll say secondary action, stuff like that, but we don't need it for that. We just need this first one, so perfect. So now I have this. First name, I am a very big stickler about data. Um, I like it to be clean. If you go into this data explorer, you'll see like I have first name, last name. I like them to belong to something. So, and that may be, you know, a little uptight, but it makes your process a little bit cleaner if you have a special place for whatever you're building, a special place for whatever you're creating. So I'm gonna do a create data step right here at the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name it case entity, what I call it, assignment, timeout, case entity. Here, take a recent, 
timeout assignment case. Perfect. It's just going to be null. That's, that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to initialize it so it has nothing. And I'm going to name this initialize data. Now, if I come here to my form, I can specify my outcome to go directly into my case entity. So first name, last name. So now I have my case entity. And then this right here, I don't have to map it. I can just do select from flow, assignment timeout case entity. Now, this is, this is going to give you a couple benefits here. Like, right, if you want something to be named or you want a value in the data structure to be something every single time, you can initialize it so that every single time it's mapped in there, right? Another thing is if, if this data structure gets large or robust, right, we can make sure that we're not mapping every single value into that thing. Like, that's a lot of mapping. We can just save what we need to save coming out of the form. So there's a couple benefits you get from doing that. Secondary action we don't really care about. That's the cancel button. So we're just going to let that let that fly. And so it's one thing I think I'm missing in here. And everyone loves a good a good end form. If you're not using them, they really create a good experience for your uh, for whoever's using the system. So I'm going to create one. Pick a create end form. I'm just going to make this the most generic dynamic table dynamic label and body in form. Come in here, it's going to switch. It's going to be canvas at first on six. You can switch to grid however you need to do it. A good, a good row kind of alignment if you want to be, uh, if you want to make a really clean look as I do 80, 20, 1, 20, 60. Have a create enough space for your buttons down here and these two little gaps in between like your actual data, your header, and your buttons. Just so like there's a couple things there. Like spacing is nice. Having good spacing in your flow will create make your forms look a lot better. And also like in case you have to make adjustments to it that are pretty drastic, you have those buffers in there just so just to kind of save you a little bit of time. So I'm gonna do on the other side, I'm gonna do 20, 1, 20. Really don't need a whole lot for this one. We're just making buffers on the outside. Now, what I do in here is I put a grid. Well, this is an end form, so I really don't need a whole lot. I'm going to make it kind of small. So this, this is just an end form again. So I'm going to do one, 30, one. That's going to make enough space for my buttons. And then one, 120, one. That's going to make enough room for that as well. So um, on end forms, you only get one button choice, and that's a close button. And that's just going to close the, the form once you're done with it. And then again, this is gonna, not going to be the prettiest thing, but I'm going to make a label over here. And this is going to be my body of my end form. Uh, I'm just going to do, I don't like how it's vertically aligned. I'm going to make it top aligned. And I'm going to make end form body. The label up here, top. Well, let's make that in the middle. That's fine. Let's take the header. So I'm going to do text from data name again. I'm going to say end form header. And this this form is now going to be very dynamic. I can use it all over the place, right? Because it takes in every single input. It just has close. If I really wanted to, I could do something else with the close button or something. But I really need to. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make where is that? Uh, use form font. I'm just going to make this 32. It's like, a, it's like my standard header. I feel like that looks good. And I'm just going to save. Now, this end form I can use everywhere. And so if, if you can minimalize the things, that the objects that you are building for your project, you can build less and you can build uh, more kind of sustainable projects, right? less things to migrate over, it's less objects in your data, so it's less complex. Um, you also get this reusability factor, like this inform I can put everywhere because now it's so reusable, it's so dynamic, right? Um, you know, anything anything to make sure that we are the laziest developers we can be. So I'm gonna do, thank you for submitting. Inform header is gonna be, thank you. We'll test trial this out, right? Debug. Here's the first name, last name. Um, 
open up. Submit. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Submitting. <laughs> okay. Perfect. We'll. I'll fix that. Thank you. Or submitting. Perfect. I'm just going to save that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a very dynamic like assignment. This assignment is going to be super simple, right? All I need to do is fill this out. And it's going to, the main component here is that it times out of the right location. So I'm going to create a flow outside of the data structure or outside of the configuration folder. It's going to work in my state. So I'm going to say timeout assignment. Timeout assignment subflow. That works fine for me. A couple pieces of things here that I like to do. I'm going to make the thing have a case ID input so I can fetch it. Another thing in here is I'm going to make this, I'm going to make a time span. It's going to be really important later. You'll see why. Time span. And I'm actually going to make one more thing. I'm going to do assigned user ID with that. Assigned user ID, specify. OK, cool. So now let's create a form. Or actually, let's not create a form. Let's just use our same form. We'll do case and see. I'm going to get my timeout case from the ID that was an input. So it takes your case ID. Perfect. Now I have my, now it always defaults to result. You can always swap that out to anything you need. Timeout assignment case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a form in here. Pick the create. I'm going to pick my timeout submission and review. And you'll see now where the button names became super important for me, right? Now I have primary action, secondary action. I can specify these. So if I want to see, um, you know, acknowledge or something like that. Whew. Struggling. Spell acknowledge. Yeah. It's a request. First name. I select from flow from my timeout case assignment. Prime action is just going to move forward. Actually, what it's going to do, it's going to change the state if they move it forward. So set set entity state is going to be powerful here. This ID is going to be that case ID. This state is going to be complete. Secondary action is going to go the same route. It's just going to go to a different date, do this as canceled. And there's going to be a third thing in here. So I'm going to make a timeout. I'm going to do this, this assigned, assigned to, I'm going to do import here. And this is accounts and groups. This is how you can make your assignments like kind of dynamic as an input. So I can come up here and do build array and I get this item one and I can just put the assigned user ID. I mean, this is not, um, this is not how you have to do it, but you can do it this way. And so that can be very nimble as well. Assignment name, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to call this new assignment. Or how about this? Review. Time span case. First name, there it is. Last name, save. Sorry, action. I'm just going to do uh, look over. And so, what's going to give us the expiration here? So, I'm going to come into assignment settings, and there is a specify expiration date. It's going to be super valuable for us here. I want to throw an exception if I give it the, if the expiration date is before today, 
right? I don't want to do that. I want it to just expire without assigning. And the form date time here, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to do compute date. This is going to allow us to basically make a um, compute the date. <laughs> I know that sounds uh, like the same thing, kind of you know, context flows here. But essentially, we pick a date, we pick in the future or the past, and you give it a time span of like when you want it to go to. So that's where my time span came in. I'm going to do select from below, time span. And now I have that pretty good. So now I'm going to get this new one called assignment timeout. And it's going to go to a new state as well. So I'm going to just paste right here. And this is going to go to our next state. And so what I'm going to do here is instead of that, I'm going to do select from flow instead of constant. I'm going to do next, next state, next expired state. Cool. And then done here. Cool. I'm just going to save that. That's going to work well for us. And okay, so now we have that. Now let's go to our timeout assignment structure. So when it started, I want it to be perfectly fine. I want to make a trigger flow that says create create assignment. I'm going to put in brackets here started. And all I have to do is come in here and put myself below. So. Nope, not that. I need create a new timeout assignment. So below. Let's line it up, make sure I'm using good practices here. Assigned user ID. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to pick myself, honestly. So just for now, this is typically sourced from data. Let's go back and let's actually fix that. Let's do a submit timeout assignment. Let's have this user pick what they need to do. So I'm going to use a drop down list. Account structure. Display fields can be the email address, data name, say all accounts. Get accounts to label. The reviewer, which you save, and now I'm going to get a new input that is a list of accounts. Now I have been stress testing my server with accounts. I'm going to have to figure out a way to not show everything. If I go to system security accounts, I'll have this giant one with tons of them, right? So I'm just going to pull these three just for simplicity's sake. So I'm just going to come here and get the manage. Uh, actually, I can just click it right here, and then this is going to be. The ID, except without that hand sign, is just going to be a space here. Close this out. Search entities. Yes. Results. The results are probably going to go to the end. I got no accounts to review. I shouldn't be doing anything, right? The biggest thing I need to do is folder ID constant pick. Oh, nice. I can just pick it. System security accounts. I just need that account group. Perfect. I'm just going to debug this. Make sure I get something. Hopefully, it didn't pull me like everything. Oh, yep, it did. did pull me everything. No problem. Let's do an entity folder ID. I guess it picks from folder and subfolder. So I'm just going to do constant here. Let's make sure. Perfect. I 
That should give me everything I need to do. Three items. Nice. Okay. All accounts, select and flow. Any results? Perfect. Select the account. I'm just going to ignore that. That's fine. And then let's add that to my case entity. So I'm going to come back to my timeout case entity. Go to my data structures. Find reviewer account ID. Perfect. So, we're going to save. Let's go back into it. Just to refresh. Here, open that out, assign reviewer ID. So I, this is where I would need to add a create data because I only want the ID of the account. I don't really need anything else. Come here, I'm gonna just put reviewer account ID. So I'm gonna select from flow, selected account, account ID, boom. And then I'm just going to map it right back into my assignment timeout object. There you go. Save. All right. So now let's go to my timeout assignment subflow. I actually don't need the input anymore because it's a part of my structure. So come right here, go to edit input mappings, go from my timeout case. Assign reviewer account. Perfect. And I'm going to leave this up for actually a minute because I'm going to go to this configuration, make my states. So, what do we got here? We got if they completed, we got complete. So, I'm just going to copy that. So, if completed, I want complete. I'm going to add a new state called canceled. Add one more state, and this is going to be um, actually, I'm going to do warn move it left, left just to stay in order, late, left, left, and one last one that says. Fully expired. And that's going to be an end. And I'll move it left as well. Okay, cast assignment. In this one, I need my subflow. I need this one. So let's make sure everything, all accounts, we don't really need that anymore. I'm just going to ignore that. I'm going to ignore that as well. But actually, we should probably select something, right? So let's. Do the same fetch entities as I had in my other one. So I'm going to go to this. I'm going to hit don't save. Now you can you can put this into a subflow if you want. If you want the kind of this behavior all over the place and kind of the same thing, I'm just going to just copy it for now uh, and just paste it in my other one. So timeout assignment subflow. Yes. Paste. Results fine, the results still go. All accounts, select the flow, and the results. They're not going to be manipulating this anyway. Select the account. I'm just going to let's, let's get the one we needed. So I'm going to do a just define, no, not just define, integration, internal services, account service, get by ID. And this is going to get my selected user, so whoever was selected at the beginning. So, nope, not that. Need to timeout. If your account ID, perfect. Current user. I'm going to switch this to system. Any kind of um, step that will interact with like accounts or groups or stuff like that typically needs a context type be able to do it just to know if like whoever has permission can do it um, and I like to just make it uh, I like to make it system just so I know this will pass every single time it'll go every single time so 
Uh, let's go to this fetch entity. This one right here needs selected account. I'm just going to do this get ID outcome. Of course, you can rename it. Stuff like that. What's needed now? Assignment user ID is missing. That's because we changed it. I hit this. Done. No more issues. Close save. Now let's close this and save it because we overwrote it. And this is going to be our getting started one. So come in here and put my flow. Time out assignment subflow. And all we should need to do is pick a time span that we want to just to assign. For the first one, I'm going to say let's assign it. Let's have it expire in 15 minutes or three years, however you can do it. Case ID, select from flow, folder ID. Next expired state, what did I say, warn? Time span, I'm gonna do a constant just for, just for sakes. Uh, I'm gonna say one minute, save. Go to the warn. Trigger flow. This is going to be super easy. All I'm going to do is put the same subflow in there. So Case ID, same thing, folder ID. Next expired state, what did I make it late? Time span constant for the sake, I'm gonna do one minute as well. I'm actually just gonna, just gonna copy this, close, save. And now for late, one more user action. this. What did I make it fully expired? Ooh. Hopefully I spelled that right. Let's go back and check. Let's just make that just in case. Close, save, and now let's create a case entity and watch it expire. Now, again, I have not tested this, so this is a very rough draft, so to speak. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna say, up. Pick admin, submit, there we go, close. You'll see the assignment popped up on the side. So it created one of those. So we got in review. Let's go to my process data and click on this one. And see that it fully expired. I guess nope, that's not started. So it is in the assignment started, and it is hopefully gonna keep expiring, going to warn, then going to late, and going to fully expired. So, um, any questions regarding this or kind of any other behavior around case entities that you'd like fully explained? Um, happy to talk through anything. Maybe it's been a minute. I'll go to my inbox right here and I can see the expiration date, 1238. Oh, see, went to my next one. So there it is, go to process data. We can see it's in the warn. Uh, Josh, did you have a question? I'm sorry, I don't think I saw it. Oh, I see it. On the topic of pulling data through a case, can you walk through your thinking for the most efficient design pattern? For example, fetching from a CRM basic background information and pulling data through states on various structures, rules, forms, and files. Um, I recommend using the structure throughout the whole process. Um, these composite structures have a lot of data. And if you make the input to be your entire data, then you can kind of use it better throughout your whole system. Um, 
is there any specific kind of questions uh, like or kind of uh, issues you're having around that or is it kind of just a how to do it best yeah yeah no no specific issue but just how, how to do it best um yeah so i i had just made our most kind of basic structure a lookup list which pop mm -hmm. the data explorer and, and that's how we've been working every time we need that data we just connect it through the data explorer we you we, said you you make it in a lookup list yeah i that, yeah we in 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 creating that initial structure mm -hmm. in the advanced uh, property settings i just click the checkbox is lookup list oh it's going to make it into the data explorer up there at the top yeah i and that that's how i've been working i'm not sure if there's a better way to do it but there might be a, there might be a better way lookup list if i'm if i'm uh have a correct understanding it adds them to every single flow is that right yeah, it's kind of that that piece of data to every input. Yeah, at least as an yeah. yeah. So I mean, you might not need that in every single flow. That you might, you know, you might just not need that all that data to be there. Um, if you do, you have specific fields and specific values that you would like to add to a flow or like a process or a project. Yeah, for example, naming, mm -hmm. then location details. Those are yeah. kind of three generic pieces of data that pass through our whole case yeah what i would recommend is maybe making them into a sub uh, um, a flow structure and kind of grouping them all together like all three of them and then you can just pass that flow structure into things as as needed so okay. and if you need something if you need something else kind of like you have a standard around like what piece of like data i'm not sure how familiar you are with like coding principles but the uh the whole um data dictionary kind of approach is to kind of make make a data dictionary and decisions host all your data so you can change it and your makes your makes your processes and your flows a little bit more flexible um totally willing to talk you through that if you need it yeah i think maybe i'll raise a ticket maybe that's the best way to do this then. yeah yeah you can raise a ticket and feel free to cc me and i'll kind of grab that ticket and we can talk about it okay okay appreciate it josh yeah no problem um, let's go back to our process data. And it looks like it is fully expired. So we have waited for our whole thing to go from started to worn to late to fully expired all throughout just using the expirations. Um, I'd say that was a pretty quick build. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and end there unless there's any more questions, but um, feel free to reach out to us if you need to talk about things, if you want to talk about something that we built today or just overall questions in general. Um, if anything kind of about this build intrigues you or you want to talk about use cases and stuff, you can always submit a support ticket as well. And you can CC me and we can talk about it. So thanks for your time and thank you for joining Decisions Lunch and Learn. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.